It's Le Mans week for MotoGP, but the big news, of course, since last time we spoke is that Suzuki have announced they will be pulling out of the sport at the end of the season, but Dorna have hit back and said, well, that might not actually be contractually allowed. We'll have the latest for you in the next few moments and what's next for both parties. Alongside a few interesting bits to come out from the Jerez test and D-Day is looming for a decision on that second seat at the factory Ducati team. The recording date is Monday the 9th of May. My name is Harry Benjamin. Joining me as ever, Crash Moto GP editor Pete McLaren and former Grand Prix rider and British champion Keith Hewin. Well, Keith, Big news, Suzuki and MotoGP. I think we can all admit we didn't quite see that one coming. What were your initial thoughts on it? My initial thoughts were if I was in the Suzuki team, I'd have been well and truly peed off with that because they didn't have a clue until Sunday night either. I mean, it was one of those situations where it just started to filter through on Monday afternoon um, during the test. I mean, it's no coincidence that Sylvain Gintoli, who is really you know, embedded in the Suzuki team um, and was working for BT MotoGP Broadcasting, um, had no clue when they were on air on the Sunday. There was no allusion to it at all. There was no comment, no sidewards glance, nothing. Nobody had a clue on Sunday that this was coming from the management. Um, and you can only blame the board back in Japan. This is, this is, a, this is the board in Japan that have made this decision. Now... It can only be financial, both looking forward and the like. There seems to be a disjoint at Suzuki between what they sell and what they're doing. I mean, that old adage about, you know, win on Sunday, sell on Monday used to be the way that, you know, MotoGP and the previous 500s, 250s, 125s, as was, um, used to sell motorcycles. But now that sports bikes have basically tanked, um, it's all off-road, it's enduro-type bikes and so on and so forth. Completely different marketplace now compared with the one that was aligned with Grand Prix motorcycle racing. So my my fear is that Suzuki have, have kind of had this knee-jerk rea- reaction to sales and the like. I mean, some of the Suzuki models are, are quite, quite aged now. There's a lot of bikes that Suzuki manufacture and sell that are kind of, they're, they're missing the market to some extent. And obviously someone back in Japan has, has rounded up the board and woken them all up and said, here, look at this, we're spending all this money, despite the fact they are so successful on the racetrack. I mean, it's devastating from 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 a race fan's point of view. I mean, absolutely, the, probably the prettiest motorbike out there is still, from the day it arrived in the paddock, I remember seeing it in Sepang and wandering around it and looking at it, dribbling, because it, it was such a good-looking motorcycle. And to win a world title, to be in with a chance of another one, if they can get it right this year as well, it just... It's devastating news and came so late. It seems like the board in Japan made their decision and they've yanked the rug. Interesting you say about Dawn and not allowing them to go. Well, it's um, my experience that, that contracts and the like, if, if you've got an unhappy party on one side of a contract or the other, the contract probably isn't worth the paper it's written on half the time. Yeah, they can, they can probably force some kind of financial you know, hit um, I'm sure Dorna will have had it nailed down because there have been people that have pulled out before that have left Dorna a bit high and dry. And you can be absolutely sure that Dorna have got a rock solid contract. But it's not in anybody's interest to have a war over a contract. Um, because to start with, it will mean that other manufacturers, if they see Dorna come down hard on Suzuki, it takes away their autonomy to some extent on what they can do with their team moving forward. You know, what are the other clauses in the contract that Dorna can actually? enforce should they want to we've all looked at contracts haven't we i mean look at broadcast contracts you know whatever you like and you 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 get to about the the 10th page and you think well according to this you know i must die if i if i don't do something that they've written in here that i should do i mean the amount of contracts i've signed that i never wanted to sign right from the beginning but had to sign them or wouldn't have got the job and that's both racing and broadcast contracts they are so incredibly complex but i still rest the case that a contract is only any good if both parties, both sides of the party are happy with it. Uh, that's the only way it really works. We'll see how it shakes out. And we've seen, of course, the same with riders, haven't we? You know, just to illustrate your point there, Keith, we've seen Zarko and KTM, Vinales and Yamaha. If the two parties don't want to continue, there's no point trying to force people to, to stick to a contract. You've got to reach an agreement. And uh, this is what came out in this Dorna statement, wasn't it? It was, uh, which was extraordinary in itself in that, 
it would only this kind of state would only come out if they were 99.9% sure this is what Suzuki are planning. We still haven't had anything official from Suzuki. This is the part that uh, you know is frustrating a lot of people is that they they still don't quite know exactly where they are. All we know is that the team were told this, and obviously. Dorna putting out this statement underlines that this is Suzuki's intention, but uh, probably for the legal reasons that Keith's mentioned, we don't have the official statement from the Suzuki headquarters yet, and it will only come from the headquarters. It's not going to come from the race team. This is way above their level, as Keith says. And the timing of this, I mean, to tell the team and then go off on holiday. It's a public holiday in Japan, wasn't it? I mean, just, uh, you know. I know why that was. They were hiding from Livio Supo. <laughs> just hired in the ex Honda man to um, shake the team into shape. Livio Supo's not a man to muck about with. He'll be looking for him. Well, exactly, and then and then to to uh, give this announcement, and it's not just you know obviously Livio Supo and, and Alex Rins and and Jaime Mir, the, the big names that of course will now be wondering what happens next for the riders. But it's not just the, the top names that you see in the limelight. It's about all the people back in the factory who put the the, the bikes together. Everybody from the PR and comm side of things as well. It's all the people who are suddenly now at risk or of losing their jobs and. I mean, it, it, as you say, no official announcement from Suzuki yet. And it, we're still early enough in the season that it gives them time to perhaps find other uh, terms of employment. But Keith, this uncertainty, it's just not really on, is it? Well, uh, it, it, we've got the opposite to what we had when KTM came to the paddock. They sucked all the talent out of you know various places from Honda and all the rest of it. All of a sudden there was a, you know, if you were a, a tech, you could name your price. Right now it's the opposite way around, isn't it? With, with you know, some very, very good people, as you say, on a human level, it's an absolute disaster on a professional level. It's it's you know very nearly as bad. I don't quite know what you know. There, there we will still have twenty four bikes on the grid next year. There's no doubt in my mind about that. Aprilia will pick up the part, but Aprilia, where Dorna has a tough you know Dorna may assist Aprilia into that gap because they will want some funding from somewhere. Aprilia know that Dorna is to not put too fine a point on it up shit creek at the moment without the paddle. Um, Suzuki will obviously have to pay um, some kind of compensation towards what's happened because it is it's an international contract that they have with Dorna. Dorna will it will come down to nuts and bolts. It will come down to, to money at the end of the day and, and who can pay it off. Um, but Aprilia look like the, the the ones that are going to benefit from from this greatly, I would suggest, because they need another couple of bites on the grid anyway. The weakest party, it seems to me at the moment, from a rider perspective, and you hit that really well, Jaime Mir is still in a good position because... I can see a Honda fit with him quite easily. Polis Bargro is in a very weak position now because he hasn't performed uh, on the other side of the garage to Mark Marquez. Marquez is coming back to form as well. So Mir, Alex Rins, I don't think fits with the Honda thing anywhere near as well. So Rins is perhaps not quite as in, in a strong place, but he's a fast motorcycle racer and there are contracts up next year. So it's, it's kind of deflated all the aspirations of management, rider management, trying to get, x number of dollars for their men because suddenly you've got two great guys that are in the market that are basically at bargain basement i contacted paco sanchez who's juan mir's manager just at the end of last week and he pretty much underlined what you've been saying there keith i mean they had no, absolutely no warning at all about this they were close to a deal i mean he thought the deal was done with suzuki they'd had meetings that weekend and basically they were ready to sign they thought that the new deal was going to be announced this weekend or maybe the weekend after at Magello. that's you know, that's where they thought their future was. So this has come absolutely out of the blue for them. You spoke about the team members as well, of course. When you've got this five-year contract with Dorna between Suzuki and, and Dorna, those team members would have thought, well, you know, if I do my job well, I've got at least a five-year potentially stay here before I need to worry. If they were coming to the end of the contract, you'd understand, well, you know, things can happen. Last time when Suzuki pulled out, it was sort of, it coincided with the end of the contract. So there wasn't quite the shock there. But certainly to, to be six races into a five-year contract, you wouldn't have been expecting to, to be told this news. So, um, and you've got to worry if you're Dorna. I mean, what about the other manufacturers? They, they all operate in these, Keith was explaining last week, these the, the, the situation financially with things in Ukraine and the, the COVID things that in, in China, the supply chains, they're all facing the same pressures. And if, if Suzuki can sort of look at this and say, our answer to, the, to these financial problems is to get out of MotoGP, despite having a contract. Maybe the others, it'll be at the back of their mind somewhere as well. So Dorna will have to, I think, make this quite painful for Suzuki just to sort of steady the ship here and make clear that, you know, we don't want everyone leaving. Let's remember it was only 
2014, I think there were only three manufacturers, weren't there? There were uh, Honda, Ducati and Yamaha. I mean, there was only those three guys. Then we had all these these new people come in. Suzuki came back. Uh, KTM joined. Um, Aprilia. We've had this golden period with six manufacturers more competitive than ever. All of them could win races this year. And yet suddenly this has come out of the blue. And you, I think MotoGP needs to understand why has this been taken? Why, you know, is it value for money? Is it the cost of the sport? Is it the exposure? What is it that, that's behind Suzuki's decision here? Just to understand for the future, because I think the understanding has been if the show is good, the racing is competitive, people will stay. And we're seeing here, you've, as Keith says, a highly competitive team, world champions just over a year ago, a bike that's still competitive and they still want to leave. It's a parallel. There is a parallel. It's called Sexit. We've had Brexit and we've left the European Union. <laughs> now we've got Sexit. Suzuki are leaving. And of course, the other members will have to make it tough on Suzuki or everyone will want to leave at some stage or rearrange their contracts. So Sexit it is. <laughs> In all the things you've said over the last year, <laughs> that has to be clipped up and uh, put all over socials, please. That was excellent. Um, but... <sighs> So what you say, picking up, pick up what Keith said, you know, we, we expect this to still be the same amount of bikes on the grid next year, even if Suzuki do pull out. And and Dorna have also said in that statement, you know, well, it's OK because we've, we've got interest anyway. We've got manufacturers and there's, and there's interest from independent teams as well. But Pete, you know, we've seen that uh, and then Keith made the point, you know, Aprilia might fill that void. But also the, the Moto3 uh, champs, uh, Leopard Racing have also said they are absolutely interested uh, in replacing Suzuki. So I suppose that, that at least there's some interest in a replacement. We're not going to lose bikes on the grid, which is which is the main thing. Yeah, there was two parts to this Dorna statement, wasn't there? The first part was kind of warning Suzuki, look, there's a contract here. You can't just walk away. We will need an agreement to be reached. But then it, it sort of admitted that if an agreement had reached and, and sort of made clear, as we've said, you can't keep people if they don't want to say, but they're going to have to come to an agreement with Dorna. Then the second part of the statement was, as you say, Harry, this we've got all this interest from other manufacturers from other teams i mean that that's a separate thing really but you as you, as you say you can't really compare suzuki you know this this with such a long history in 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 the sport you know barry sheen champion with them kevin schwantz uh, you know all these great this isn't just a, a factory that's popped in for a few years and is now leaving this they have a long history here and yes you can replace them numerically with an independent team but that's not it's not the same thing is it it's not bringing the same exposure to the sport, bringing the same money into the sport that a, that a factory would bring. It would take someone like BMW to come in. But I mean, we see them sort of dabble around the edges with the safety car and the advertising, but they've never made that step. And you think with the way the world is financially now, with the uncertainty, why would they decide now? I don't know. If a team did want, if a manufacturer did want to come in, of course, there is a race team there. If they, if they could grab hold and keep this team intact, it is a great opportunity in that sense. But um, but yeah, you know, yes, you could have another independent team. Pons would be another one to add to it. They, they you know, race winners before in MotoGP, now uh, in Moto2, obviously at the front of the field still. So they might want to step up forward racing the same thing. There's another one you could add to it. There, there's no doubt independent teams that will want to step up, but it's not it's not a, uh, a like for like comparison, I would say, with Suzuki leaving. Mm. And you also there's a there's a good article on uh, Crash.net written by yourself, Pete McLaren, um, Livio Supo doing a, a Ross Braun potentially as well, and and staying on to lead that team in into an independent stage. Uh, again, another another possibility. Do you think Livio would want to do that? <laughs> this we just don't know, do we? You uh, should know what, what Keith thinks about this, but because we haven't had the official announcement, we don't know what form this withdrawal will take, and and whether as part of this agreement that they will need to reach with Dorna, something might need to be done to try and keep the team team intact. They'll be working on it right now as we speak. You can almost be sure of that. I mean, it's a situation that um, resolution is is necessary very quick. You imagine what the riders are feeling like at the moment. We're going to Le Mans next, one of the trickiest ones of the year. You know, and all the, the personnel and the team, their heads have dropped, you know, and they've had a difficult year this year so far. You know, it's not been the kind of year that they've, they've been expecting. And, and and they're just seemingly getting there. And all of a sudden, this bombshell's dropped in amongst them. It'll be interesting to see how they react. It'll be interesting to see, you know, what's going on around the paddock when, you know, as soon as they start getting there, you know, tomorrow, effectively, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, Thursday, press day on Thursday. There's bound to be an announcement, I would think, on Thursday. Um, we'll all be watching the monitors to try and see exactly what's going on there. So tune in, if you can, to the MotoGP.com um, site. But it's 
it is a disaster that they've of, of their making of Suzuki's making. It might turn out to be fiscally the, the correct thing to do. This, this world market that I keep going banging on about. I mean, the, the, the war in Ukraine, nothing yet is, is it's not shaken out yet fully. We, you know, this if it escalates, it will be even worse. But even if it stays as it is, with it ca carry on going, the sanctions that have got to be placed on Russia and so on and so forth are going to be hard for most of Europe and the rest of the world. You know, once they start to resource, you know, more gas, more oil from different parts around the world, it's going to go up for everyone else. It's not, you know, it's it's supply and demand. The, the less supply, the more the demand, the more the price you got to pay for it. So worldwide, we're all going to be, you know, food. Isn't Ukraine, don't they provide 30% of the world's wheat or something ridiculous? Russia, another load of, of stuff that they, you know, anything that comes out of Ukraine and Russia, bearing in mind they're two fairly substantially sized countries, um, is going to be in short supply. We're going to have a problem. Yeah. I, I, I can see 2023 being a, an awkward year and everybody is going to be reeling back from extra costs. And maybe Suzuki have, have, have made the right decision for their corporation maybe they've looked at their books a little bit harder and seen that there isn't that correlation between Grand Prix racing and their road bike sales structure. And they've decided to jump early. Um, yeah, I think they should pay a massive penalty. I think Dorna should enforce that hard because it's through the Suzuki mismanagement or, or lack of oversight, if you like, that we're in this position. You don't yank the carpet out in the situation that they have. Having just signed, have they just signed a five-year deal with Dorna? They've just, as manufacturers, they've only just signed a five-year. Does the left hand at Suzuki not know what the right hand's doing? Because one lot have signed a contract for five years with Dorna, only just, and now they're pulling the rug. I mean, I, I mean, I can't think of a, a worse managed major corporation than that. Hamamatsu, they must. You know, must be on something special over there, I would think, to to, to muck this up in the way they have. It's and incredible. Perhaps longer term as well, the worry is, will Suzuki ever be able to come back? If they leave under this kind of dark cloud, Dawn is not going to roll out the red carpet for them in the future, are they? And we saw Kawasaki well, make it leave. Easy. No, we saw Kawasaki leave. It, and, you know, it's been made clear that if Kawasaki want to come back, they'll have to buy a team. They won't get, as Suzuki got, as KTM got, as Aprilia got, their own grid places. OK, it took Aprilia until this year to get them. But, um, you know, they will have to, having left previously, having some years to run on their contract, they would have to go through that hassle of finding a team, buying them and everything else. And I, I would think Suzuki will now be facing that situation they were able to get away with it before by leaving but also giving this return date making clear look we will be back we're going to build this new bike um and, and all these kind of things but i i can't see them being able to, to to repeat that shall we say this time around given the length of contract that is, as you're saying Keith, six races into a, a five-year deal which was signed literally i think it was april 21 it was announced so i mean to, to go from that kind of commitment to being we want out whatever it takes it, what a, what a complete reversal yeah i don't that's the bit i don't understand it's like sort of it's like it's the board decision is half the board were asleep at that particular moment in time when they signed off the deal for five years i mean again the length of a grand prix season nowadays is the longest it's ever been and they're looking to to add more rounds into the future as well the costs of that are huge um we are where we are with that um fingers crossed we don't see it from any other manufacturers and that will be uh, the big worry, won't it? Well, uh, Suzuki certainly uh, landing a bombshell on everybody in, in MotoGP in the last week. As Keith says, uh, stay tuned to Crash.net and uh, the MotoGP websites as well this week. Uh, if we do see any announcements, knowing our luck, they'll announce something just as we publish the podcast. So uh, make sure you stick about. Probably Tuesday morning there'll be something. Um, let's move on then from the uh, huge Suzuki news, of course, but it will continue to cloud, I think, the, the week building up to Le Mans. Um, but before Le Mans, we had some Jerez testing Pete um, and uh, Quartararo trying some new things. <laughs> 